Hey everyone, my name's Khadija. Thanks for joining in today. I wanna to start by thanking the heads of this house for letting me jump into this summer series called House Party. And thank you to PJ and P. Ray for everything that you guys do. Thanks for serving selflessly and allowing me to share this word with you guys today. Um, so let's jump right in. Lately, I've been reflecting about life a lot as a millennial. And if you're at motivation, then you probably fall into the millennial bucket. Um, and you've probably heard what they say about us. They say that we're anxious, that we're depressed, um, that we're whiny, we're always complaining, and we have bad attitudes. And to be honest with you, they're not wrong. Um, we probably are all of those things, but we really have had our fair share of odds stacked against us. And that's from recessions to the changing job market to housing affordability to a pandemic to this inflation that's just crazy. You name it, we've been through it. And to be honest with you, it feels like as a millennial that you just work so hard to get to a certain point in life. And once you finally get to that point, it kind of feels like the goalpost has been moved. So you're not quite there yet and you got to work a little harder. And by the time that our parents or the baby boomers, as I like to call them, and I'm sure some of you guys fall into that bucket too, um, when they were our age, you know, most of them were, they were already raising us. Um, they already had kids, but the majority of millennials statistics say um, they're not married right now and they're not having kids. Um, you know, they're too busy competing with student debt crisis. They're too busy competing with inflation right now. They're kneecapped by everything happening around them and everything that's happening to them. And one thing about millennials, you know, that you can't deny, even though I've said all of this, is that you can't deny that we're resilient um, and we, we've always managed to come out on top. So I was recently watching this docu-series on Netflix. It's called Working What We Do All Day. Um, and it was actually created by the Obamas, by Barack Obama, so he's actually in it. And I highly recommend it. If you haven't seen it, definitely give it a watch. I love a good docu-series. And it was exploring questions about what brings you joy in your work and what gives you purpose and what makes a good job actually good and the series touched a little bit on how we as millennials you know will never reap the benefits that the baby boomers had um so boomers were able to inherit this rich dynamic country you know they had the middle class and they essentially bankrupted it you know they they bankrupted it they cut their own taxes they borrowed money when they weren't supposed to they had no concern for what was to come and what was coming in the future which was us and they've left us with the mess to clean up and so in many ways millennials just have become the lost generation at this point and it brings me to this internal question that i've been pondering and maybe it's you know the pessimist in me or whatever but I just keep asking, why are we getting the short end of the stick? Like, why do we have to be resilient? Why do we have to, you know, fight against all the odds? Why is it so much more difficult for us? Why are we getting the short end of the stick? And you're probably wondering, okay, Khadija, like, you know, this all sounds unfair. And where are you going with this? Um, what am I talking about? So there's actually a story in the Bible that speaks to this and it answers my question here. So the title of my message today is Change Your Perspective. So let's go to Kings 2, chapter 4, verses 1 through 7 in the NLT. And it says, One day the widow of a member of the group of prophets came to Elijah and cried out, My husband who served you is dead, and you know how he feared the Lord, but now a creditor has come, threatening to take my two sons as slaves. What can I do to help you, Elijah asked. Tell me, what do you have in the house? Nothing at all, except a flask of olive oil, she replied. And Elijah said, borrow as many empty jars as you can from your friends and neighbors, then go into the house with your sons and shut the door behind you. Pour olive oil from your flask into the jars, setting each one aside when it is filled. So she did as she was told, her sons kept bringing jars to her, and she filled one after another. Soon, every container was full to the brim. Bring me another jar, she said to one of her sons. There aren't any more, he told her. 
and then the olive oil stopped flowing. When she told the man of God what had happened, he said to her, now sell the olive oil and pay your debts and you and your sons can live on what is left over. So I wanna talk about the woman in this story. The woman in this story, she's at the end of her resources. She's struggling. She's facing the loss of her two sons to slavery, to settle a debt. Um, she's in a bad situation. So in her cry for help, we start to see the reality of our own, you know, human flesh and the overwhelming, the overwhelming burden that life sometimes brings our way. So again, what does this have to do with being a millennial? Like, what am I talking about here? Many of us can relate to this widow's struggle. We experience moments of helplessness. We feel trapped by our own circumstances. We have financial struggles. We feel like the odds are stacked against us. And these are all the moments that we just have to take a step back and stop and lean on God. So the Bible says in Matthew 11, 28, um, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 11, 11, verses 28 through 30, it says, then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. So point number one, write this down, ask for what you need. Let's jump back into Kings. Um, in response to the widow's plea, Elijah's asking her this really crucial question. He's saying, what do you have in your house? And he says that in verse two. And Elijah's challenging her to examine her resources, regardless of how small they might seem, right? So he's telling her to take a, a stop, to take a pause, and think for a moment about what she already has. The widow replies to him and says, your servant has nothing here at all, except a small jar of olive oil. So we usually fail to recognize that God's already given us what we need. It's already in the house. You don't, you know, you already got it. And ask God for what you need. So stay faithful in your prayer. Remember that a closed mouth doesn't get fed and at the same time, though, remember that, yes, ask God for what you need, but remember that God's not a genie in a bottle. God is not a magician. He's not here to do your magic tricks. Prayer, it's not magic because we don't have power in and of ourselves. Prayer is expressed helplessness. Prayer is being in a place of submission to God. And God's not here to give you what you want. He's really here to give you what you need. And... Um, I think one way to kill your prayer life is to overthink it. Um, it reminds me of myself when I came into my faith walk and prayer was this like spooky thing. I thought that prayer needed to be rehearsed. I thought that prayer needed to be practiced. And I would watch all these people on Sunday at church pray and I'd say, man, like they sound amazing. They sound so good. They sound like they've practiced this. And I thought that I had to like do all these different tones and eventually, you know, I realized at the end of the day, prayer is just talking to God. Prayer is being in your car, being at the gym, being in your bed, wherever you are, prayer is just having a conversation with God. Um, point number two, work with what you've got. Elijah asked the widow um, in, that, in the, that verse, he says, what can I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? She said, your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. So he's trying to show her that, again, what she needs, it's already in the house. But just like us, you know, we're so quick to say like, God, I don't have anything. God, I, I don't have enough. God, I can't do it. And God wants you to take a step back again and work with what you already have. Um, we we usually want God to just give us more, like more, more, more. You work to get to a certain point, you still want more. And we want to be at our final destination. Um, I actually like to call it destination happiness. And a lot of millennials suffer from that. Um, it's a, it's this feeling of, you know, once I get here, I'll be happy. If God would just let me make this X amount of money, then I'll be happy. Um, we don't want to go through the seasons of pruning. We don't want to look around and see what we've already got. So we're 
in this age of social media where there's the metaverse and there's AI and there's all this craze and it's like so much going on, it's moving a mile a minute. And the truth is that we're a generation that's built on impatience and instant gratification. And you can't fault us for it because that's just the environment that we're in. Um, the truth is that even if God gave you what you wanted, you wouldn't be happy. Um, because like I said, it's never enough. It's a constant, I want more and more and more. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that we shouldn't strive or we shouldn't want more, but we, you know, we all want more. But the worst thing that God can do is to give you what you want at the time when you don't need it because it'll cripple you. It reminds me of when I was a college student and I was getting ready to graduate and I, you know, I was working at a few law firms at the time, corporate law firms, and they were good jobs. But at the same time, all I could think to myself at that point was this, this ain't it. Like this can't be it. There has to be more than this. And it felt never ending. And I think at the time, you know, looking back now, I realized like God didn't give me what I wanted in that season because he knew I wasn't prepared for it. Um, when the time was right, I was able to step into the position that I needed to be in. And sometimes we have to go through seasons of pruning to appreciate the blessings that God has in store for us. Um, and not only that, but to be ready for those blessings, to be ready to walk in those blessings. So think to yourself in these moments, like, I might not have the job that I want, but how can I work with what I have? And what impact can I have here now? And maybe this job or whatever situation you're in, maybe it's pruning you so that you can be ready for your next position. Um, I might not have the house that I want, but how can I work with it, you know? So there's preparation and pruning. And I want you guys to write this point down. Like PJ says, some of you guys are really slow, but worth waiting for. So write this point down. Nothing derails a believer quicker than the loss of vision in a wrongly interpreted season. Again, nothing derails a believer quicker than the loss of vision in a wrongly interpreted season. So what am I saying here? I'm saying don't misinterpret the moment and the season that you're in because you're there for a reason. A lot of us were quick to write God off. You know, we say, again, we're, we're built on this instant gratification. And we if we don't get what we want, we immediately write God off. But I want you to shift your perspective. I want you to think instead, what's God showing me in this season? What's God trying to teach me in this season? What, you know, maybe I need to go through this pruning. Point number three, expand what you have. So again, let's go back to Kings. Then he said, go out and borrow empty containers from all your neighbors. Don't just get a few. Then go in and shut the door behind you and your sons and pour oil into all these containers. Set the full ones to the side. So she left. After she had shut the door behind her and her sons, they kept bringing her containers and she kept pouring. So what does this say here? This tells us that God takes the little that we have and he multiplies it. So I want to go back to that documentary I talked about because it was so humbling to see people who were at the bottom of the middle, you know, the middle and the lower class, um, but people who were making minimum wage and people who were still thankful and they were stretching what they had, making it work. And eventually God was able to multiply their resources. So think about what your little is, you know, how are you stretching it? Are you sitting around and are you just complaining about it? Are you saying it's not enough? Are you, you know, saying those same things like, God, I can't do it. God, I don't have anything. Um, are you limiting your little? And God wants us to, again, examine our resources and be better managers over those resources so that we can expand them. Um, you know, again, it reminds me of, you know, that when I was getting out of college and I was going for my current position that I'm in and I thought to myself at the time, like, yeah, I have experience. Like I've worked at landlord tenant law firms. I had some trust in estates experience and it was experience, but I thought to myself, like, it's not enough experience. And um, I was going for this position that honestly, I, I was applying to jobs left and right at the time and I was getting rejected for a lot of them, some of which I was really overqualified for. But there was this one position 
where I went on LinkedIn, you know, cleaned up my profile, took a nice little profile picture, made everything look good. I had a recruiter reach out to me for the job and I really wasn't aware of this company. I had no idea what this company did, where it was, but my husband, my lovely husband, <laughs> knew where the company was and he thought it was a really big deal. Um, and so when I started doing research on the company, I thought to myself, like, I am not qualified for this. I, the position for some of you guys who might not have insight into the legal field required a lot of immigration experience. And for me, I'm an immigrant. That doesn't mean that I have immigration experience. And at the time, I just thought my little is not enough. Like this little experience that I have, it's not enough. But that um, the recruiter for the company had reached out to me on LinkedIn because they were interested in me. They took a look at my resources and said, she's qualified for this. And actually she's overqualified for this. And it just makes me realize that at the time, my little was enough, but I was limiting it. Um, I wasn't, you know, stopping to think like, maybe I do have this experience, maybe I can work with what I have, and maybe those seasons of pruning that I went through were actually for a reason. And I just needed to shift my perspective a little bit to see that my little wasn't so little. So that brings me to the end of my message today. And, you know, let's go back to my original question. I said, why are we getting the short end of the stick as millennials? And my answer to that question is another question. Are we getting the short end of the stick or is God pruning us in this season and maybe we just need to change our perspective? So thanks again for tuning in. Thank you guys for joining me. Again, thank you so much to Pastor Jay and P. Ray for letting me share this word. Um, and jumping into this summer series. What's going on, Motivation Church? It's your boy, Mev. I'm back like I never left. If this series has truly blessed you, please follow us on Instagram and Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. My beautiful wife, Khadija, just brought forward an amazing word and it's really helped me change my perspective and I hope it helps change yours as well. Stay tuned for more House Party and I hope you guys have a great week. Peace.